Dear friends in Christ, it is a joy to be with you. It's always great to come to Peace Lutheran Church, and I'll tell you, the music is always just outstanding. Can we thank our musicians? <clears throat> it genuinely moves me. It always uh, pours God's love and blessing into my heart to worship with you, to see you uh, in action, to hear the beautiful music, to, to be in your presence. And thank you, Pastor, for inviting me to be with you for this special day as we Celebrate God's love and mercy and God's love and mercy shown through our wonderful servant, Dr. Johannes Mengsta. So let's bow our heads and pray as we meditate on God's word. Heavenly Father, thank you. Uh, you show us your glory and your grace. You give us a reminder. If any of us came in here today dragging a little bit, worried, anxious, already through your word and through praise, you have poured into our souls and hearts and you are refreshing us and restoring us. Bring to completion the good work you've begun as you speak to us through your word now. We pray this in your precious and saving name, in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So we're going to focus on Matthew chapter 25 today, that parable, the talents. You're very familiar with it. You've heard it. Jesus introduces that parable really by, in a section of the scripture where he's talking about what the kingdom of God is like. He's saying, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And you probably have learned and studied that when Jesus says that, he's not talking about a building uh, or uh, some sort of territory, the kingdom of God. What he's doing is he's talking about how God works, how he reigns as king over us. So Jesus is saying, this is how God works in your life. And particularly, he's preparing us for the second coming of Christ, the return of our master. So Jesus tells this parable to talents. He said, this is what God does. This is how he works. Here's how the king reigns. And when he, in the parable of talents in Matthew 25, he really gives you and me some basic essentials for life here and now. I think it's one of the greatest parables because he really helps you and me understand what is life like right now? What do you need most? What do you need to know most? What do you need to do most as you wait for the master to come back? So let's look at some of the things Jesus talks about. What you need to know most for your life right now. The first thing Jesus says is that the master has gone away for a while. The master has gone away for a while. Now this is really important to know. You know. True, Jesus is with us always. The Lord never leaves us, nor does he forsake us. That is bedrock, solid, foundational truth for us and comfort for us every day. But it's also true that we're waiting, isn't it? We're waiting for the return of Christ. He's ascended into heaven. <clears throat> Jesus lets us know that the master's gone away for a while. And while the master's away, it's not easy for us. Because the household just isn't the same when the master's gone. You can see how that's true in our lives and in our world. With waiting for Christ's return to restore all things, life is hard. We've got wars, we have pandemics, we have suffering and injustice in this world. There's violence, terrible things that break our hearts, and not only break our hearts, but impact you and me personally. Life is hard with the master gone. You don't see it just all around you, but you live it as you struggle with illness and worry, anxiety, financial burdens and stress, inflation's going crazy. The division in our culture, all of the inundation of media, the influence and difficulties of people drawn into comparison and criticism and bullying all seen in social media. You may have a broken heart as you sit here today because you lost a loved one or a relationship is stressed or strained. You may have been praying a prayer to God for years, waiting for his answer, and you're still waiting as you're on your knees and you're feeling worn out. Maybe just the past two years have caused you to become at your wit's end with anxiety and difficulty. Maybe you've got some friends who are being unkind, or maybe they're being unkind to you. It's not easy when the master's gone. And Jesus levels with you and me, and that's one thing we can depend on God for. He speaks the truth to us. 
He speaks the truth in love, in a caring way, but he lets us know the reality of where we stand here and now. It's a broken world. It's a dark place. There are struggles. You bear crosses. It's not easy. So Jesus says the master's gone for a while. But he also shows us another amazing truth for life. You notice when the master went away, he entrusted his servants with treasure, with his own goods, his own possessions. He treated those servants like they were his own family, like they were his own heirs. So the second truth is this. The master's away, but he loves you. God loves you. He's for you. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. God is not someone who's far away and an enemy. He's not trying to get back at you. He's not holding grudges against you. He's not resenting you for the mistakes you've made. He's not sitting on high ready to crush you at any moment. You see, you see through the sacrifice of everything in his life, his only son, how much he loves you. If God is for us, the Bible says, who can be against us? He sacrificed everything. Will he not give us all things? Your master, the master who's gone for a while and we're waiting for, loves you and is for you. You are his child. You are precious to him. He's interested in your life. He advocates for you. He walks with you. He wants blessing for you. God loves you. It's so important to hear that and know that today. Maybe you've felt very alone recently. I want to let you know that your Savior, God has come to be with you and give his all for you. He loves you deeply. He cares about your life. He cares about your life. You are not without his love. And on top of that then, the next thing that this text lets you know for your life is not only does God love you, but then he blesses you. He gives you treasure. You know, the master gave each of these servants some treasure according to his ability. That word talent is a New Testament word that refers to, it's a weight, a certain weight of precious metal, gold or silver. We use it now as a skill, but that's what it meant originally. It's, it's this treasure that the master gave, blessed those servants with. God blesses you with treasure as you wait for him. And it shows his love so deeply. Think of the treasures you have in your life from God. Think of the people, your loved ones God has given you. Think of the friends, husband, wife, children, grandchildren, grandparents, dear people around you, fellow church members. God has given you precious people in your life. God has given you so many wonderful possessions, clothing, and Shoot food, and he takes care of you, home. God's given you the beauty of creation. I love being in the sanctuary because you see the beauty of creation, the light shining in. God has given us the wonderful beauty of his creation to enjoy and to refresh us. God's given you the gift of time, time to spend on interests and pursuits and passions and to give to others. God has given you so many treasures. Think of the treasures God has given you. Can you think of the top two or three treasures in your life? Maybe you're sitting next to one of your top treasures or a couple of your top treasures in life. He's given us the church. He's given us fellowship. And you know what else God has given you? He's poured out treasure upon treasure. He's giving you his living word to sustain you and to breathe life into you. He's given you the gift of holy baptism. He's called you his own through baptism, washed you clean of your sin because of the death and resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And he says that because you've been buried with Christ by baptism into death, now you walk in the newness of life and you have hope every day. He's giving you the blessing of the Lord's Supper. So Jesus actually takes up residence in you to strengthen you and cleanse you, to give you hope and to lead you and walk with you through this life. Think of the treasures God has given you. He blesses you. So the master's gone away, but he loves you, and he gives you treasure. He blesses you. Why does he give you all these wonderful blessings? It's because you have a calling and purpose here on this earth to bless others. 
to bless others. You know, those servants received the treasure, and the first two, what's the first thing they did is it says in the text that they put the treasure to work. They put the treasure to work. God has given you your treasures so you can steward those treasures, so you can work out what they're here for. The promise was in the treasure. Those servants didn't cause those treasures to be valuable, but they were stewards of those treasures. And the same is true in your life. God put you here to put the treasure to work. He didn't put you here to give people a hard time every day. He didn't put you here to let your grouchiness prevail in life. He didn't put you here so you can cause problems for everybody. Now, all of us do that. We're fallen sinners and we have our bad days. But the good news is God didn't put you here to be hopeless, anxious, helpless people. He's poured treasure into your life so you can bring hope and light to the world starting at home. So you could be an influence of goodness, grace, and peace to your friends. So you can pour life into your family. So you can come together as members of the body of Christ and say, you know what? We may be going through some tough times and maybe there are some worries in our life and things are not ideal and and we carry some real griefs in us, but we have hope in Jesus Christ. He's given us treasure. You remind each other, you share that with one another because that word of God, the treasures of God really do work. You're here to love each other as God has loved you. And instead of just echoing the negative, hopeless narrative of the world or joining in with all your friends or people around you or coworkers who like to go into the deep ditch of negativity and hopelessness and complaint, you're here to remind them that there's a treasure that's working in their lives, that there's the love of God with us, there's the gift of prayer. There's constructive and beautiful conversation we could have with each other, encouragement. You know, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, right? Love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You're bearers of that treasures, of those treasures. You're here to bless one another with the treasure. You may have heard this uh, last week that Vin Scully, the longtime Los Angeles Dodgers play-by-play announcer, passed away. In his 90s, what was he, 94, I think? 94, he announced, called Dodgers games for 67 years. That's remarkable. Now, and he's celebrated, beloved, isn't he? You know his voice, probably. You've heard it in replays, and it's just renowned. Isn't it something that Vin Scully never hit a game-winning home run? He never stole a base He never won a championship. He didn't make anything happen on the field. You know the one thing Vin Scully did is he told the story. Folks, you're here to tell the story. Jesus gave his life on the cross. God created you. God sent the treasures. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus ascended into heaven of his own glorious power. He distributed his gifts and blessings. He's at work in the word and sacraments and among us. He's the one doing the heavy lifting. We can't do that. But we're here to be the Vin Scullies of the world, to tell the story, to tell the story of Jesus' love to your husband and wife, to your kids and grandkids to your neighbors and coworkers and friends, to one another in the church, to this world. We're here to tell the story. That's what Johannes, Dr. Johannes Mengstev has been doing through his whole life, and it's so good to celebrate him today. From war-torn Eritrea, from a battlefield, he was rescued by God to become uh, an evangelist and then a pastor and then a mission developer and a mission strategist. And through his whole life, what has he done? Simply, he's told the story. He's told the story of a God who saves and redeems and puts lives back together and does things beyond all we can ask for or imagine. He's told the story of God who cares about each one of us and makes us one in Christ. He's told the story of the forgiveness of sins that renews. 
He's told the story of an eternal hope, the hope of heaven that sustains us to life everlasting. And he's told the story of the Word of God that gathers people together to be the church that impacts communities and lifts all people up. He's told the story. That's what you've been doing at this church. This church is wonderfully tells the story. You're a mission partner in extraordinary ways. You've helped deploy church planters and start new congregations around Texas through your mission gifts. You've impacted this community, continue to impact this community with the love and generosity of Jesus Christ. You are being the Vin Scully, telling the great story, telling of the heroics of God, of the amazing comebacks, of the walk-off home runs of, of Jesus, ra- ra- raising, you know, rising from the dead to conquer sin sin and death, so we have eternal hope. You're telling the story. That's what we do. You're blessed by the God who loves you to be a blessing as we wait for his return. One final essential from Matthew 25 I want to close with. So, master's gone for a while. He loves you. Blesses you with treasure so you could bless others. But one more thing. You know how the master said to different things to the first two servants and the last servant. That last servant was really afraid. And so he took that treasure and he buried it. Now maybe he thought he was doing the right thing. I'm not going to let anything harm my master's treasure. I'm going to tuck it away safely. And when he comes back, I'm going to pull it out of a hole in the ground and give it back to him. Say, look what I've done. Nobody hurt the treasure you gave me. But the master didn't call him faithful. The master called him wicked and lazy. But one final thing you need to know is you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid to bless others, to give selflessly like Christ has given you, to show love. You don't have to be afraid. There's some risk involved, and sometimes it's scary personally to invest yourself in others or you know, to share a prayer with a neighbor or to sit down with your kids and tell them your story with Jesus or to stand up to friends who are going one direction, you know they should go the other. There's, there's a lot of things that can scare us in life. It's scary as a church to take risks and to give money away and to empower missionaries and to get out into the community and invite others into this place. It's scary to do that. But God says you don't have to be afraid. And he's taking care of it. He's God. When we become afraid, we step into the place of God and try to bear the weight of the world on our shoulders. And God says, no, 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 that's not your job. You don't have to do that. You're a servant. You don't have to be afraid. In fact, not only do you not have to be afraid, but the master said to those other servants, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and partake in your master's joy. Sometimes in life as Christians and in the church, we can forget That God gives you joy in this journey. It's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of energy and there's all kinds of risks and man, life can be tough while the master's away. But you know what? The master gives you joy. There's joy. How is God calling you these days to bless someone in your life? How is God today calling you from fear and drabness and grouchiness in your life, how's he calling you just to some joy? To show joy to your family and show joy to the people around you and to remember the joy of God who loves you. How's he calling you just to remember that joy? And you can take a deep breath and let the weight of the world fall off your shoulders, back onto the shoulders where they belong. Your Savior, your God, who is Lord of all, the risen Christ who sits on the throne. How's he calling you to let that fall off your shoulders, that big heavy weight you carry around, just to take a deep breath and say, oh Lord, thank you for the joy of life with you. Help me bless others now as you blessed me. Let's bow our heads and pray. Oh gracious God, thanks for giving us everything we need for this life, exactly what we need today. We rejoice in that. You care about us so much. Help us to call the game around us as we see you do your work and tell the story of your love and to stand out as people, blessed people who bless others. We trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen.